It's your boy High Five Vega, and today I'm going to teach you how to build a SPIM 08 HP battery. We've got enough for 48 amp hours. I'm going to tear down my old battery, rebuild the new one, and take you through it step by step. So, without further ado, let's get straight to it. All right, so I've got all my cells here. We're going to check voltages. These cells were already in a bank with a bouncer. They should all be pretty close. These are the cells that I just purchased. I only need four of these to complete my bank, but I ordered a couple extra because when you're using recycled batteries, it's always a good idea to get a couple extra. If you get these from the battery hookup, they're really good about replacing them if you do have a bad one, but then again, you got to wait that time to get them replaced. So I always order a couple extra. I think it's a good practice and it's not too much more money. So let's check the voltages and then we'll do a top balance with the uh, factory hardware and kind of get them all in the same range before we build our bank. All right, we're at 3.715, 3.715 on that cell. Looking pretty good so far, 3.6, 3.7. So we're a little off there, not too terribly bad. 3.7 right there. So with the top bounce, what we're going to do is parallel all the positives and all the negatives together in one big line, and we'll get them to balance amongst themselves, and then we'll get on with building our battery. All right, so using the factory hardware, I've got it separated in two banks of six. This is our top balance mode right here. So all negatives on this side, all positives on this side, same over here. And I only have half the screws in because the top balance, we're not gonna be pulling a lot of current. So we don't need all the screws. We just need them to be touching each other and balancing out. So let's go ahead and check the kind of overall voltage. All right, so we're at 3.715 on this side and 3.716 on this side. I'm gonna leave them for about 24 hours or so. Tomorrow we will disassemble these and then reassemble them into a battery pack. I will also show you how to hook up a bouncer, but I gotta be honest, I gotta tell you guys something. I smoke this one, I don't know if you can see. So no matter how comfortable you are with hooking these up, always be careful. What happened was I didn't have all the leads unhooked and one of them came loose went to ground and it literally smoked this. So we're gonna assemble the battery pack tomorrow. I'll show you how to hook this up. Even though I won't be using this one, I definitely gotta order another one. But uh, hey, it's the name of the game. So I will see you in 24 hours. All right, they're all unhooked from top balancing. So we're just gonna give it a quick once over and see where the voltages land. 3.72, 3.72, 3.72, 3.72, 3.72, 3 3.72. So looking really good so far. Go on to the next one, 3.716, 3.716, 3.717, 3.717, 3.717. Three point seven one six. So that is one of the issues with top balancing them separately. We got three point seven two over here, and over here we got three point seven one six. Not too far off. Not going to be a big issue, but the ideal situation would be to top balance them all together so they are all exactly the same. They're close enough. Once we get our balancer on there, they're going to be good to go. So now that all that is done, we are ready to start assembly of the battery. All right, before we start assembling, I figured I'd explain this to you. I know a lot of people have trouble kind of visualizing how this should go. So this setup in particular is a 3P4S setup. What does that mean? That means three parallel, four series. So the visual example here is three batteries parallel, positive, 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 negative, 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 lined up. Series will then jump over here to here to here. So that's where we get our four series. We're gonna be using the stock bus bars here to hook them up so you can see that they hold six cells. This is gonna be perfect for us because the first bus bar is gonna go from here to here. That's our first set of series. 
Then we will also go from here to here with another bus bar and from here to here with another bus bar. We will have a spacer here. So I'm going to put an S for spacer here. We will have a spacer here and here. So this is in series and parallel. You can see we have them connected here in series, a spacer connected here. That is the bottom. On the top, we have one piece connecting them both with no spacer because obviously these will be connected and then a spacer on the ends. That leaves us with the main positive here and the main negative here. Now for the main positive and the main negative, it comes with a pure copper piece and that's what we have here. These spacers are just a simple piece of plexiglass. So those will go in the spots that we have marked for spacers. That will be our pack. So one other fact that I have here on the paper are 16 amp hour cells. That's what one of these cells are. You can see it's got a little glue on it holding it together. What this is, this is actually two 8 amp hour cells. You can see here I can separate it if I want. Bolted together. So that gives us one 16 amp hour cell here. These are already paralleled for us. So this is 16 amp hours. When we series and parallel them, we're going to end up with a 48 amp hour battery. So three of them are paralleled. That's what we're gaining our amp hours. 16 times three is obviously 48. When you series these, you do not gain amp hours, but you gain voltage. This is gonna get us up to our operating voltage. So at 3.7 volts each, once we series them, we should have a resting voltage somewhere around 14.8 volts. All right, so the pack is assembled. I need to go back and tighten up all the bolts. When I'm assembling it, I basically get it, you know, kind of snug, but you need some room to get these spacers in. So you don't want to do a final tightening until the whole pack's assembled. But before we go forward, let's check our voltage, see where we're at. And if you remember from before, we're looking for around 14.8 volts total. This is the negative side, this is the positive side. I will be marking these later on just for uh, for safety's sake. All right, we're at 14.93 volts. So we're right where we need to be. We're okay to go ahead and tighten all the bolts down and then we can put, insert the all thread. And then of course, later on, I'll add something for compression with the all thread and this pack will be complete. All right, the battery is complete. Here it is, although it's not truly complete because I need to add some compression on the ends. But for right now, we got the threaded rods in. We've got them compressed. We've got our spacers in. This is the top, of course. The yellow lets you know it's positive. The lack of yellow lets you know it's negative. I definitely gonna go ahead and mark these with something um, just so I know in the future, even though I'm the only one that's gonna be messing with this. It's always good just to have that marked so you don't mess up. This is the top side. So I'll flip it over, let you look at the bottom side here. So this video is just a build log, kind of walking people how to uh, assemble a pack like this. They're very cheap, very easy. Go to Battery Hookup. I'm not an affiliate, but I will leave links so you can get your parts from there. 
These are around $8 per D16 amp hour cell. And the bus bars are around $5 for this piece, around $5 for this piece, plus or minus a couple bucks. The spacers are less than a dollar each, and the threaded rods are somewhere in the range of $5. So not too much for as much capacity as this actually has. This is a 48 amp hour bank. I believe that these stock bus bars are rated for around 400 amps. So we don't want to go super crazy on this bank, although this is a smaller bank, so 400 amps is probably in the range of, of what we do with this anyhow. If you wanted to go bigger, say a 96 amp hour bank, you're going to definitely want like some aluminum bus bars, quarter inch, something nice and beefy, uh, or copper if you're fancy. So with that being said, we will uh, we'll put this to the test later on. It will live underneath this test bench as my main battery. Now the charging range on this, I believe it is up to 16.8 volts max for a pack. What I'm gonna be using it for, I'm probably gonna charge around 15.2, 15.3 volts, which is a little high for an amp test, but hopefully it pulls down a little bit and gets us right in that 14.4 volt range. So I think this is gonna work, although some of the smaller amps I test will probably just be power supply only and we won't use the battery bank. It'll just be here for the uh, for the big guys. So I hope you did enjoy this video. If you like DIY lithium stuff, let me know in the comments below because I've got some other projects I'm looking at messing with, trying, and uh, seeing how they perform. With that being said, I do appreciate each and every one of you, and I'll catch you on the very next video. I'd like to thank all my Patreon supporters, but the six star or more members get a special shout out, and that is 2001 Monolithic, Gene Nava, Joaquin Juarez, El Fuego Audio, Travis McClendon, Brandon Hanna, William Berg, Box Boy Audio Sound Solutions, Jesus Tires, Dennis Cromwell Jr., Scott Dilbeck, D. Stewart, David Koslick, Scott McCord, Matthew Tolberg, Cornet, Trucker 9000, Bobby Burkett, Kevin Lautner, James Childers, Baba, Thomas Marshall, Living Loud with Andy, Neil Nato, Chris Cogburn, Lars Madsen, and Old School Stereo. For as little as $2 a month, you can join the Patreon team and get exclusive Patreon-only content, including a monthly Patreon-only hangout stream. It's a really good time. You guys are missing out. And if you want to join, check me out at patreon.com slash high five vega. Oh, oh. I know at least one of you is thinking, hey, wait a minute, I know he told me he was going to show me how to wire up an active bouncer or a BMS. Well, I am going to show you. Just click this video right here.